Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Foreign Correspondent Club of Japan. First, I would like to open the event with a housekeeping rule. Please switch your cell phones off or put them to manner mode. <coughs> Now let's come to the event itself. Uh, with the increasing great power competition between the United States and China, human rights are becoming a bigger topic in foreign relations. How to deal with this issue is especially important for export-oriented nations like Japan and Germany. Even the ge Japanese government is starting to, is changing its tune, starting to um, bring up um, human rights violations in discussions with China. In Germany, there's also a big dis discussion just these days before Chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz will visit uh, the Chinese President Xi Jinping. Um, Scholz will be the first foreign dignitary to visit uh, President Xi after he won the, uh, his third term as Secretary General of the Chinese Communist Party. And uh, the big contentious issue in Germany is first Chancellor Scholz approved um, the investment uh, of a Chinese state-owned company in, a, in the parts of the Hamburg Harbor. Secondly, um, there's a big discussion about uh, the, an app possible approval for a takeover or a sale of a German uh, chip plant to a Chinese company. Um, we are lucky that we have a German delegation of the Committee on Human Rights and Humanitarian Aid here today to talk uh, with, to us about the German approach to human rights and foreign and economic <coughs> policy. Um, please give our guests a very warm welcome first. And, and now I will introduce the members. Uh, the head of delega delega delegation is Peter Haidt. He is uh, with the uh, Free Democratic Party. Um, he will give a introductionary remarks and then all um, participants will have a short personal statement, individual statement. Second in line then will be uh, Diria Türk Nachbauer from the Social De Democratic Party. Third is then Heike Engelhardt, also from the Social Democratic Party. And uh, after her, we will have Carsten Brodesser from the Christian Democratic Union to talk to us. And the end will make Boris Miatovich from the Green Party. Thank you very much. And now I will give the word to Peter Hyde. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Um, the journey of the Committee on Human Rights and Humanitarian Aid of the German Bundestag needs to be seen in a direct connection to our focus topic, <coughs> systemic competition, human rights, an integral part of the world order, and went to Taiwan and Japan. Both states are venues of exact this global systemic competition between liberal democracies on one side and authoritarian regimes on the other side. Taiwan evolved into a democracy with functioning constitutional structures and shares a view on human and liberal rights that is similar to ours and Japan. In this regard, Taiwan is the exact opposite to the Chinese authoritarian model of rule that intimidates Taiwan with military threats. Japan faces the same threat of China and the threat of North Korea adds to it. We wanted to get a picture of the tense security situation and communicate with government officials, parliamentarians, and representatives of the civil society. Human rights issues like the death penalty, violence of policemen, was on our agenda as well as the question of how to deal with targeted disinformation campaigns and North Korean abductions. And of course, the trip was intended to deepen the relations between Taiwan, Japan, and Germany. China has not left any doubt that it sees Taiwan as an integral part of the People's Republic, and that it is willing to annex Taiwan, if necessary, by force. And just like Russia, China is not willing to respect the restraint of the free world. In our coalition treaty, SPD Greens, FTP, 
agreed on being a strong coalition in view of human rights. That means, most notably, that we want to support democratic countries. This applies in particular for Asia, since there are not many democracies left either. A dialogue with China remains important, but we cannot tolerate that China dictate us its rules. We will only be able to meet the China's challenge together. Besides, we need to find ways to become more independent from China. In this regard, we received valuable suggestions during our discussions. We will take these suggestions with us to the discussion in Germany. As spokesman for the Free Democratic Party of Human Rights, I can state with the utmost clarity, especially against the background for the discussion about the participation of a Chinese state company in the port of Hamburg, that we must change our laws in such a way that we can prevent any future Chinese in involvement in critical infrastructure in Germany. For me, our trip was a big success because the conversations were mutually beneficial. I very much hope that we can continue our talks, be it in, here in Asia or in Germany. We were welcomed with very open arms in Taiwan as well as in Japan, with great warmth, and I can say it was a visit to friends. Finally, I would like to thank my colleagues for the excellent cooperation and the German Embassy for the great support. Thank you. A journey of 1,000 miles begins under your foot. We started our few thousand miles journey a few days ago to learn, to understand, and to evaluate. Relations between Germany and Japan have been very close and trusting for a long time. Japan is an increasingly important value partner for us, not only in East Asia. Not only do we work together closely in the fields of business, culture, education, and science, <clears throat> but we also share common values such as freedom, the rule of law, and a strong democracy. A democracy that respects human rights in all that it does. We are allies, and it's more important than ever to stand together and stand up for our values. The world order is shifting. Alliances that have been very valid for a very long time are no longer suitable. Neither Germany nor Japan is acting in a vacuum. Both are convinced that cooperative solutions to common challenges are better and more sustainable than solo efforts. An important basis for multilateral solutions is, is trust. Trust that international rules apply <coughs> and treaties are reliable observed. All this no longer seems to be a matter of course regarding the international rule-based order being attacked. A policy of predictability or of reliability must be our response to nations which are trying to change the world order. A reliably and strong UN must be our response to those who want to abuse their power to weaken the United Nations. In all the exchanges we've had in the last two days in Tokyo with your MPs and your committees, we, we were happy to have a reliable partner like Japan on the side of Germany. Strong democracies need strong women. Women are half of the foundation of the house called democracy. If the half of the foundation is missing, it does the house no good. A society only progresses, as scientists also say, if the three R rules are followed. Rights, resources, representation. The women in Japan have all rights. They have all resources. They, there's just a lack of representation. It's just great that you want to change this because you are not and you cannot be satisfied 
with having 9.7% women in your parliaments. We had very constructive discussion, discussions with the MPs. Talking about constructive discussions, yes, we have had interesting talks about your guidelines on respecting human rights in responsible supply chain. Guidelines are great, but laws are even better. We would say, so just go for the law. We'd love to share our expertise with uh, concerning the supply chain after 1st of January, after we have implemented our law. The issue of supply chain takes me to the question of Uyghurs in the Xinjiang region. There are more than one million Chinese Uyghurs uh, detained in de uh, determination camps. We had yesterday the chance to talk to some of them, and let me tell you, they are really grateful to Japan that you are being a very safe home for them. Thank you for this. Many of them don't even know if their relatives or families are dead or alive. They don't have contacts for many years. I think we should put the international focus on this issue. This is unacceptable, yeah. Uh, it's a great injustice, and injustice is what I want to say about Japanese citizens being in North Korea. The victims of kidnapped Chinese citizens should come back and Korea should give all any information they have to the Japanese people because it's a case of uh, it's a matter of sovereignty. It's about the safety and life of ch uh, Japanese citizens. There are enough things we have to talk and we have to solve together. We are really keen on. Uh, we are looking forward to being in, in exchange with you to see how much your progresses, uh, uh, how good your progresses are going concerning the issues of death penalty, concerning the issues about the situation of migrant workers or the situation of the people in the <coughs> detention camps. Thank you. So long. Next is Elke. Heike Engelhardt. Heike Engelhardt. Thank you. Besides uh, death penalty, which is one of the most severe violations against human rights, besides inhuman and unfortunately lethal treatment of persons in police stations, I want to change the topic to my topic, to the biggest group of the people in the society, to the women. Participation of women in politics is important. What can we do to make more women part of politics? For example, we can have positive role models like our former Chancellor Merkel or like now our president of the German parliament from the Bundestag, Bärbel Baas. We had an important and very um, interesting uh, exchange with a group of parliamentarians and they asked what can we do else because they uh, are thinking about quota discussions. Um, and uh, they asked me what is your experience and I said yes quota is one way but it's unfortunately not sufficient. I think one way to get more women in politics uh, is a law of parity. So you will get 50-50 per law. That could be one way. Another short topic in my constituency, I am member of the committee of twinning towns. And I think it's always important in Europe twinning towns, we have only Europe twinning towns, to know each other, to understand each other and detect the same interests and to trust in each other. And therefore, I am convinced it's important also to have the knowledge and even friendship between parliamentarians. So we can work together for the human rights in our country, in the Indo-Pacific region and in the world. Thank you. So next in line is Carsten Brodesser uh, from the Christian Democratic Union. <coughs> yes, uh, 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for attending this conference today. As you probably know, our delegation was first in Taiwan, and the current threat to Taiwan from China was uh, also an important topic during our talks here in Tokyo. Both Germany and Japan are democratic and value-oriented countries in which freedom and the rule of law are of central importance. I'm very pleased that the Japanese interlocutors only stand closely by Taiwan's side and resolutely reject a change in the status quo by force. During our talks, we were able to learn that Japan, too, is giving intensive thought to greater economic resilience and a reduction in economic dependence on China in this context of system competition. In addition, human rights are to be given greater importance on all levels of the economic supply chain. In this context, it is particularly important, just as in Germany and Europe, that companies are able to identify and comply with clear definitions and rules. Other topics of our discussions were the possi possible abolition of the death penalty in Japan, and of course we support the uh, abolition. The, uh, further, we got information about the possibilities of parliamentary institutions in Japan who deal with human rights issues. Of particular importance is the criminal abduction and deportion of Japanese citizens to North Korea in the 1970s and 1980s. In any case, the victims must be able to return to Japan. As human rights politicians, we support every initiative that makes this repatriation possible. Furthermore, we met representatives of the Uyghur diaspora community in Tokyo, who were again able to very impressively describe to us the situation of the people in Xinjiang. The worst violations of human rights happen there every single day, and the contact between family members in Xinjiang and Japan has been prevented by all means on the part of China for over five years. The Uyghurs in Xinjiang deserve every support, and I thank Japan for its contribution. We felt very welcome in Tokyo, and we were guests of friends. Thank you very much. Okay, and last in line is uh, Boris Miljatovic uh, of the Green Party. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, let me emphasize, I don't want to repeat all has been said so far, and I completely agree to it. Let me emphasize two perspectives. One is the international one where we have to ask ourselves, how far have we gone with globalization? Did all these free trade agreements work out if international law is not respected? So any China strat strategy that we are dealing with at the moment in German Bundestag and in European Union must focus on the question, who is the good guys respecting law and judgments of international organizations and institutions, and who is not? So this is a Thing. We are not the foreign committee, we're the Committee on Human Rights. So this is the thing we all have to talk about, to discuss, and then to have a strategy to deal with uh, countries that do not respect international law. We have heard from the coalition treaty some words, and there's one aspect in there which is called end to impunity. So our task here in Taiwan and in Japan was to talk about end to impunity not only to Ukraine and the war of aggression the Russian Federation is conducting, but also to people in Myanmar, in Sri Lanka, in Philippines. So international criminal justice is a core topic of this government, and we talk about this with Japanese friends, with Taiwanese friends. So coming to Japan here, I <coughs> emphasize death penalty to be ended quickly. Uh, moratorium should come now because the question of life and death is nothing to be dealt with by a human. Uh, we have heard cases from NGOs of police violence. We think this is a topic Japan authorities should look thoroughly to it. Severe crimes happen within this state uh, situation. We have the same sensitive issues in Germany, and we need to talk about this. We have a national institution on human rights that highlights each and, ingles, each and every single case. So we need to look at this. And last but not least, gender equality. Heike has said all 
It needs to be done in the society and it needs to be supported by law. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the short and concise speeches. And now we have enough time for question and answers. I will open the floor right now for regular members, journalist members first. Um, please, if you have questions, raise your hand and then come to the microphone and introduce yourself by name and affiliation. Okay, please, yeah. This one, yeah. My name is Miyoshi, a freelance journalist. Uh, I know that Germany is very strict to, the, to Russia uh, in terms of uh, the Ukraine crisis. And my question is, uh, is there any difference between uh, the Germans uh, dealing with uh, Russia and the dealing with China? Uh, Russia and China is uh, different or same? Thank you very much. <clears throat> so who wants to go first? Who, who are you asking? <laughs> Who are you asking? asking? Uh, oh, select, yeah. select one, because select otherwise one. we will all answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot. I would say maybe one from the CDU and one from the government. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, the first difference is that uh, China is not... Uh, in an active war against uh, another country, and uh, Russia is an aggressor uh, who um, invades in, in, in a free country, uh, Ukraine. So that's, that's the first difference. Uh, and the second difference, and uh, you mentioned uh, the relationship between uh, uh, Germany and uh, China, uh, that is, uh, China has many uh, economic relationships uh, between uh, the German uh, be between the economic sectors, and um, but we have to to change the uh, the dependence of of, of China, uh, and and so uh, we will end the dependence of economic dependence from China. Yes. Yeah, I can um, add. Um, the um, economic connections to Russia are not so uh, big than to China. Um, Russia we, um, was especially energy, and we will solve the problem with the energy of Russia. We are on a good way to do this. Um, but um, the dependency um, uh, to China is uh, much bigger. So we already uh, have a discussion in Germany about this dependency, and we have to reduce this. Um, but this is not only um, 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 a message to our government, but also to our economy, to our companies, um, that they have to think over their engagement uh, in, in China. And, um, I know, or we know, this is not um, um, a thing we can do in, in a few days. This is uh, um, something for years. But I think um, we have to start it now, um, because um, we are also talking about supply chain. And um, I think Europe is a perfect uh, region um, to build all the things we need. We don't have to go always to China. Okay, then f I will first take an online question and then you. Oh, wait a moment, uh, first an online question, then I take you. Okay, Ilgin Yorumas, BBC World Turkish, asks, uh, both Germany and Turkey are NATO members and Germany often criticizes Turkey for its human rights record. In the past, Germany withdrew its forces from Incirlik US base in southern Turkey and pulled its Patriot missile system and froze any upgrade on its tanks bought by Turkish government. Yet, Germany also buys drones from Israel, which is criticized for its treatment of Palestinians in Gaza and elsewhere. Do you think there is a contradiction here and uh, Germany's approach to, 
to strike a balance between human rights and trade is case by is a case by case basis. Okay, who wants to go first? You want? Yeah. Okay. I don't think that that we should start a whataboutism here. Um, it's obvious that there are human rights violations in Turkey. There's no doubt about it. And but as Turkey is a NATO member, it's good to be able to talk to them. We don't want to talk about Turkey. We want to talk with Turkey and find solutions. This is what democracies work like. Okay. Boris Mijatovic, please. Um, I totally agree with uh, my colleague. Uh, let me just um, highlight uh, my hometown is Kassel. We had uh, Documenta 15. We had a lot of talks about Palestine, and uh, we had a lot of debates, also with Israeli and friends. It's not that we do not look into this situation, but it's a balance that is inside there is one talk and not to compare with another. This is what Daya said. And I can only suggest that also in arts world and cultural exchange, we do not mix up topics and scenes that may lead to, to very wrong uh, results. Perhaps one, one thing to this. Um, um, the Turkish uh, medicine professor Finanji, uh, she was uh, captured by the Turkish state after she visited uh, Germany. This is, a, uh, this is a symbol that um, the Turkey um, uh, don't um, respect human rights and free speech. Takeshi Kawasaki freelancing is sort of. Um, tens of thousands of Russian young people left the country after Putin announced the de facto con conscription. Does Germany eventually accept them if they are recognized as refugees? Uh, what do you think of these um, deserters at this moment? And, uh, and another thing is that, that uh, any, any support in Russian uh, human rights? Um, who else? Uh, who wants to go first? Maybe um, we have seen uh, this uh, practically on the uh, situation of the, um, how you say, train line between Petersburg and Helsinki. It was stopped in middle of May, I think, because on the one way, tons of people were leaving the country. We have seen this kind of exodus from scientists as well, and we grant asylum for Russian scientists and uh, people who fear for their life. But we have to look into uh, counter spionage as well, because many, let's say, fake uh, asylum people come with this uh, number as well. So this is kind of a problem we have, but we look into this and we try to help Russian. Uh, for the inside of Russia, it's very, very, very difficult. Um, uh, you know that the um, um, human rights organization, M, M with M, Memorial. Memorial. Memorial, thank you, sorry for that. Memorial was uh, stopped by the state. Uh, but we still are in touch secretly because they have to hide. Uh, it is, Russia is an authoritarian uh, police state where you have to hide when you, when you work because you are accused to work for the enemy. So this is something we, we try to continue but not to endanger these people, yes. And it's important, they are, there are these voices in Russia. It's not a war against Russian people. It's the Russian head of government who is doing crimes, serious large-scale crimes in Ukraine. And there are lots of people in Russia fighting against this too, yes. Gleisen, DPA, German Press Agency. Um, the death penalty, you talked to the Japanese side uh, about the death penalty and you demanded an abolition or at least a moratorium on mm -hmm. the death penalty. I wonder what was the response by the uh, Japanese side and what were the arguments in order to 
I mean, in favor of death penalty because apparently the Japanese government holds on to the death penalty. Uh, thank the you. answer is here quite similar as in uh, Taiwan. Uh, the population uh, of Japan, Japan or of Taiwan, they are uh, for, uh, for the death penalty. And because um, the population don't want um, no death penalty, so we cannot do very much. Um, we all um, try to, to um, convince the, the government in Taiwan, uh, as here in, in Japan, to do more, to more, more education, um, perhaps do uh, some steps, first moratorium, and then the next step is then um, to end the uh, death penalty. Um, and um, I think um, we have in Taiwan and also here in Japan um, civil society who are fighting uh, against the death penalty and we just were by the, the um, uh, Japanese um, law Bar Association. Bar Association, right, thank you. Um, and, and they also are dealing with this problem. And I think um, um, it's, it would be a really good sign if um, Japan um, goes back to his history. Because in former times, in uh, 800 what, to 11, 800 to 11 um, they had no death penalty here in, ja here in Japan. So this was a good time for, for, for the right. If I, I think may, oh, excuse me. If, if I may add, add something, at least the Japanese government um, constituted a project group who are to, uh, which is talking about the future of death penalties. At least they are dealing with this uh, issue. Um, we, we are all convinced that the lack of information is one of the results for that uh, high percentage of um, supporting the death penalty. It's nobody in the public, this is what has been told to us, nobody in the public is talking about death penalties. There is, it doesn't uh, appear in media. So death penalties are just um, executed, executed mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Not knowing when, not knowing where, the families don't know nothing. And I think, we think, we all think, that it would be a change if people started talking about death penalty more in public. Excuse yeah, me. That was the same what I wanted to say. It's just let me add one thing, because I think it's important. When you do polls and ask mm -hmm. for emotional situations, for murder, for uh, rape, whatever kind of serious crimes, People will answer, yeah, we want the highest penalty, maybe. There are cases where even family says death penalty is not just. But majority says 80% was the standard answer in Taiwan as in Japan. But you have to see, maybe it's time to change law as well. It's not 15 years only. We have in Germany something called Sicherheitsverwahrung, where you have to check and prove we have this besondere Schwere der Schuld. I don't know how to translate that properly. I'm sorry. I hope. Someone can rephrase it later, but seriously, this is something you have to extend from our point of view in a judicial system to, to, to stand that there is a serious crime and a serious punishment. And death penalty is, in our views, going much too far because it's not just. It's, it's too much power for a human to decide, even for a judge. A judge has to decide or a minister has to decide. And we, we agree all uh, in our talks uh, try to convince that this is too much of a responsibility for one human. Can you, it's fight, you really fight together. Yeah. Can, you, can you explain what Sicherheitsverwahrung means? So it's in case of serious crimes, um, so there's, I think, mm -hmm. also a, a statutory limit of uh, uh, sentences okay. in Germany, but it can be extended? Or hold okay, can be it's, the, it's an expression years. that comes from the... Um, forensic psychiatry and it means that um, people has committed a crime and they are um, uh, judged. they are judged, judged. and normally uh, you can leave prison after 15 years but there are some people from 
those you don't know if they will commit the same crime or any severe crime again. So they have to be in, um, interned in an, in an asylum, in a, in a hospital or in any place. And they have to be um, survived periodically and there has to be done a prognosis, psychiatric prognosis, criminalistic prognosis to, um, to look after them after each year, after two years. Uh, there is uh, different um, periodics. But um, the, you have to look for them. You have to look that they get um, uh, treated uh, psychiatrically. Um, and maybe when they um, are better, they can go out the prison and they are no longer a danger for the society. So uh, I think the, the topic is the society is afraid of some people, and so they wanted them sentenced to death or to kept in prison. But there are um, possibilities between sentenced to death and keep in prison, so maybe it's a sort of human treatment with people who, who failed in one way. The, the court has to, in his decision, has uh, uh, write down the particular severity of guilt. Oh, yeah. And then uh, a prisoner cannot go out of the jail uh, after 15 years. Mm -hmm. He can, minimum. Many, minimum. He has to go longer in the jail. And you have to take care that there are persons with handicaps as well, mm -hmm. psychological yes. handicaps, <laughs> etc., cetera, et cetera. So there's a large yeah. topic to discuss. Yeah. Uh, Pio de Miglio from Italy. About death penalty and uh, life sentence, we all agree, I think we Europeans, but we are still centuries far from Asia mentality on this. So you, your wishful thinking about uh, Japan uh, preparing some kind of plan, good luck. <laughs> it will take time, we know that. It will take much yeah. time. Um, there are so many questions that I would like to ask, but uh, let's reduce to couple. Just one or two. Yeah, one or two. Couple. I said couple. <laughs> uh, first of all, I read here in the notice that uh, Germany is a country oriented to strike a balance between human rights and trade. I couldn't agree more. Yesterday, President of China, Xi Jinping, sent a kind of peaceful message to America, saying, let's go back, let's stop all this uh, colliding uh, uh, trend, and let's go back uh, to trade and and good cooperation, prosperity, win-win, whatever. Germany, historically in Europe, has played this role. I frankly cannot understand why there is such a big uproar, for example, on yesterday or a couple of days ago, a partial swell of the port of the harbor. Um, you know, Greece has sold the old Pireo, we Italians tried very hard to sell our uh, <laughs> ports, but the Chinese didn't want us because we are not uh, up to their technology. So where is the balance? How can Germany go back to this role? The big question is, are you aware that European interests, in which Germany plays a very important role, are different and sometimes colliding with the Americans. And the second one is a very witty one, so I will ask it at the end. Yes, yeah, a difficult topic. Um, first of all, it's not the harbor itself. It's, no, it's, 
I don't want to go into details and then, you know, avoid the question, but just to be frank on this one, it's a shipping that wants to go be part of the terminal, which is kind of a common business. So having said so, it's important to have this strategy I was talking about. I demand, we demand our coalition as well as partners, we demand our government, we are parliamentarians, we demand our government to prepare a China strate strategy. What does it mean? We have in Hamburg not only the harbor, but we have also the International Maritime Court, as you know. And there are 10 or 11 cases open where a judgment is ignored by China, by People's Republic of China. So we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean if we do have international trade and free trade and all this, and buying shares on the one, on the other hand, well, we couldn't buy a share on Shanghai Harbor, but different story, but, and how do we, do we protect this common law organizations like the Maritime Court? This is what I said, Russia destroyed or we can destroy the uh, UN fundament by aggression. Uh, so we have to talk about this very frankly. And so there's, like I said earlier, there's on the one hand the states that uh, protect the uh, international law and there's on the other hand states that don't. And if they keep on uh, ignoring judgments from an international agreed court, then there should be a reaction to it. And about uh, colliding interests on the friends, I think this is normal. And friends sit together and discuss how do we get along with this. Of course, international trade is uh, business making, and of course, there's business interests. And who buys soil from uh, Brazil and who sells what kind of stuff to whatever? This is trade, normal trade. But if trade is not based on law, it is not going anywhere. You know, uh, China also depends on supplies from the West. So this is not a, a one-street situation. And mm -hmm. I think at the moment China uh, tries to, uh, to um, decrease his um, need of, of uh, goods from, from the Western states. Um, so we have to do the same. And um, the participation uh, in a part of the port of Hamburg um, this is a sign, and I think um, a few days after after the, the um, party congress of the Communist Party in China, this is the wrong sign of, from Germany to the rest of the world. This is really a big problem, you know. We have, but we have as a coalition, we have to respect the German law. That is what I said in the beginning. We have to we, we have to face that our law is at the moment not the best law to deal with such a problem. So we have very soon changed our law, and my party will try to do this in our coalition, which I can promise to you. And uh, because we think um, in the future, um, everything what is about critical uh, infrastructure uh, should be in, in safe hands and not in the hands of China. Um, because we must not be open to blackmail, and this is a big problem. Um, because what, what are we doing, uh, for example, by the Hamburg Harbor, the um, Chinese state company says, okay, if you still want that we are working with you, you don't have to receive any goods from Taiwan. So then this is the, the thing that would, could be happen. And we are dealing with a new China strategy, the coalition. And um, I hope we will um, find together this new China strategy and we will find answer how uh, Germany react in this case. And um, we will discuss this also with our European friends, no doubt about it. So then I have another question from our online viewers. David McNeil with the Irish Times ask a short question, maybe not simple. Can war with China be avoided? <coughs> of, co if, of, if course, course, of course, of course. 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 Yes. 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 If, if two things. First, we have, must be strength, we must be clear, and we must discuss with China. This is the two parts we have to do. Democracy needs dialogues, and this is what we're going to do. <coughs> Okay, then a question from my side. Ah, first you, please. First you. Uh, 
Hi, I'm with uh, Tokyo Broadcasting Systems. And my question is, um, as you, all of you um, have vi just visited Taiwan, how would you um, assess uh, the actual threat, threat or actual risk of Taiwan being invaded by China? What, what did you find out in Taiwan in, in your visit? The people are concerned. This is what we felt. Um, the president is a little bit concerned, but I think China is a strong democracy. I like strong democracies, and they are, they are having stable partners. This is very important. Taiwan is not alone, and this is what gives self-confidence, I think. And it's good to know. Uh, Taiwan is trying to internationalize the issue of Taiwan on, of China, and this is good. So um, concern, concern is there, yes. But nobody's expecting that uh, China is going to invade in the next few days or months. We have talked to uh, some uh, digital natives. Yeah. And the digital warfare with China, with the People's Republic of China, or with the Communist Party in China, is ongoing. So they had uh, techniques. They have. They are trying to to make. Uh, you know, they have this information flow. They have money flow. They have all these kind of uh, problems that that run over their country. And there is a there is a, a living strength in in this. Uh, this guy, we met to fight against disinformation and to fight against yeah. these kind of campaigns in the digital world. We have a different challenge in Europe. Mm. In Europe, we have Russia today that is going by television. Here it is more postings of millions of people going by Instagram and trying to set narratives for the Uyghurs, for example. This is a horrible crime that was uh, uh, mentioned by Ms. Bachelet in her uh, there were testimonies in her, in her report. And China, People's Republic of China is responding with happy people in a beautiful landscape in, in uh, Human Rights Council in, in Geneva. Come on. And this kind of narratives, uh, these Taiwan people are fighting from, from academies. And, and uh, that was for us very, very interesting very because it's a different kind of, of information warfare we, we already have. You can learn something of, from, yeah, from Taiwan. Really impressing, yeah. And I think it's an incredibly lively society. I was surprised of yes. this yep. society. I must. I think we all were yep. surprised. And I think we learn the price for China must be high, mm. too high, to uh, attack Taiwan. And um, this can be possible. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Ten minutes to go. Uh, one question about human rights and trade. Um, the, the human rights are becoming a hotter and hotter topic these days in t times of systemic competition. But how do you operalize, operationalize it in, tr in trade relations? So what is your answer? Because this is, uh, I guess it's a very difficult uh, point. Um, so when do you stop trading with an authoritarian regime, country, um, just because of human rights? Or are other issues also important? That's a serious problem. We have the problem, or we have the problem uh, uh, concerning the, the supply chain um, law. Uh, in Germany and the, the European in initiative uh, of the supply chain uh, has the same problem. How you can measure uh, the violation of human rights and how you can measure social standards and how you can measure um, um, the th these things. But you have to do it uh, because uh, the human rights uh, uh, are essential. So um, we have to deal with it. I think it won't be avoidable not to deal with uh, authoritarian regimes. Because the whole world is, uh, as I said, we're not living in a vacuum. 70% of the people or uh, nations don't live in a democracy. So in times of globalization, we have to also deal with authoritarian 
nations. Mm -hmm. We don't like that. And I hope we're trying to restrict the dependence from such countries. We, we have to strengthen democracies. And this is why it's so important that we start partnerships with nations or with countries who share the same values with us. It's, it's a time that de Democrats stand together. Maybe I can add a, a perspective from consumer side, yeah. because Europe is a huge consumer market. And uh, I know for Italy as well, there is a demand for products that are free of forced labor, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, free of raw materials that are grabbed from mines by 12-year-olds, uh, cell phones free of child work, and, and stuff like that. So we have societies that demand for sustainable development goals. And companies are requested to maneuver into these spheres. If they don't, they cannot, you know, keep keep their their label, their white shirt on the market. Let's say, uh, as soon they are connected to uh, any kind of these crimes, uh, they have a reputation problem. Uh, we have seen companies in Germany facing this already. Yes. To be honest, normally, um, China would be a country um, we should sanction and we should uh, know nothing sell with them. Um, he mentioned no, uh, Hong Kong. This alone is enough. Ta Tibet, uh, Uyghur, uh, the whole situation um, in, in the land is so awful. You know, I had, uh, I had people from Uyghur in my office. They told me about the situation. They say suffer. Um, torture and so on. It's um, incredible. Um, so I think we have um, to do um, a con consideration process um, what we can do and what we cannot do. And they are not the only truth. And one thing is we need to find the like minded countries in the world and we have to support them more. Well, just to follow up on what you just said, globalization is one very clear concept, and it didn't start from China. It started from the U.S. and the West. I think that uh, you were all impressed, like we were, that at the last Davos meetings, Chinese were there and the American president wasn't there. So that's a sign of history, which way it goes. And I believe that globalization cannot go along with the word that now is pronounced very, very dangerously, decoupling. Are you convinced that you are, we can go toward a decoupling uh, situation? That's my follow-up. And the last question is uh, to the two ladies. I totally share uh, the, your view about women that should be empowered more in countries like Japan. Uh, Germany, I think, is doing very well. Italy wasn't. But now we have a prime minister, a woman. What is more important, to have the first uh, prime minister woman or the danger of having uh, a fascist? <laughs> very good question. Yeah, very good question. <laughs> and um, it doesn't matter if a fascist is a woman or a man. A fascist keeps a fascist. saying a fascist. Uh, right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. We have to empower Democrats, women. Yep. Maybe to your first question about decoupling. Yeah. Um, we are the Human Rights Committee, and we point the finger to the questions. We point the finger to the questions of the authoritarian regime Mr. Xi Jinping has established in the last 10 years. It's a rise of nationalism. It's a rise of, if you look into his, um, how you say, uh, circle of people that is, uh, that is accompanying him, is a dramatic change. I'm not that familiar with Chinese history, but if you look on other Chinese leaders that have changed their teams or with a, with a perspective on this nationalistic path, 
I think he's uh, overrunning them. It's my personal perspective. So decoupling the, the two things doesn't work any longer. This is something we have to face. It doesn't matter who started uh, globalization. You can look on British Empire, you know, with India, or we can go far to history, uh, Chinese even so. But today we are facing the situation that war is back into politics in a scale that is ex exceeding Syria or Balkan wars or other wars we have and had on local, but this is a global threat we are facing. So talking about China's strategy means we need to face, we need to, to, to answer the question, how do we deal with this kind of challenge, making trade on the one hand, and highlighting and ensuring that international law, including humanitarian law, is accepted. And the threats to Chan, Xinjiang, to the Uyghur people that Ms. Bachelet, the UN High Representative for Human Rights, mentioned in her report that cannot be any longer denied. This is my, my opinion, and I think this of my party group, and I think we in the coalition didn't say end to impunity just for fun. This is something we have to have to look at very thoroughly. Yeah, but all this, uh, you know, war in 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 Europe has not been staged by China, and uh, frankly speaking, I hear, I feel that in your. Uh, talks, you perceive China as a military threat. Uh, frankly, I, uh, I dissent on that. I, I don't see any uh, sign of China willing to use military force. They're going to use trade force, and we better deal with that. This is no doubt about it, that they use trade force, but um, they are flying with their uh, planes and shipping with their ship around yeah, Taiwan around and also course. about Japan. Yes. So this is there, you know, in former times, China has no big, big ships. Now they have big ships. And, um, you know, um, nobody built uh, big ships uh, to, to make a cruise, cruise trip, you know. Um, and, you know, we had this in the past, and I think a look <coughs> in the past helps us um, uh, very often. And one thing, we all represent human rights in our groups, and to try to promote them as much as possible. So we are together in our fight, um, and um, I think it's a big, big good step that our coalition writes very much about human rights in the, in the treaty, in our treaty, in the coalition okay. treaty. And this is the right sign, and we will go this. And I say, this foreign minister of his party is a good one. So Thank you. Uh, I say this as a free democratic, you know? Yeah. And because we are, we are fighting together for human rights, and she will do the same. And please look up military invention of China's uh, People's Republic of China in the last 10 years. Mm. Their capacities, their, their capacities oh, have capacity. grown. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not military games when they exercise around the island of Taiwan. Well, I'm most concerned uh, about what happened until now by other countries. So we have, uh, yeah. so Come thank you very much. I think this was a good uh, final uh, call. Thank you very much thank for you your much presentations for and for your thank discussion. You for yes. And. Um, when are you going back? We are, he is going to Qatar because he is the strongest man of us, still on the work. We go home. No, I'm going to Sudan. <laughs> okay. You are so okay. We both, we, are, we, we, going we, home. we three are going home. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us.